If you're a creative person, you struggle with starting a project. How do I make the first mark right, the first word? Well, that's what I want to talk about today. The blank page, what it is, why it happens, and what we do about it. It happens to all of us. It happens particularly when you're starting out. So let's begin by understanding what are creative blocks. So you sit down, maybe you have a sketchbook in front of you, maybe you have a blank canvas, maybe you have um, a blank score that you're gonna try and write a song on, maybe you have a blank Google Doc that you're gonna sit down and uh, try to write something in. And the first thing you think about is, I could do anything. The, the possibilities are infinite. How do I even know where to start? The commitment to the very first mark, the very first word. This is so important because that very first word I put down, everything is going to come after it. And if that first word isn't right, if that first line isn't right, it's all going to suck. And I don't know how I'm going to possibly get past that first thing. There's so much pressure on that opening action. There's also the endless possibilities of the directions that we could go in once we take that first step. What next? Where is it? Where are we going to go? It's, it sort of reminds me of when you go to um, the drugstore and you want to buy sunscreen or shampoo, and there's thousands of possibilities. I was buying silver polish for Thanksgiving because I had to polish up my mother-in-law's silver. And I went to the hardware store and they had dozens and dozens and dozens of choices. I was reading all the different labels. I thought anything I do, like I might make the wrong choice. I might ruin her silverware. I might breathe in toxic chemicals. Just that fear of that anxiety over making a mistake made it really, really hard to commit to one of them. Ultimately, I did, and I, we had a very nice dinner, but still. Um, another part of this is also what we call analysis paralysis or paralysis by analysis. So you're sitting there and you're just massively overthinking it. You're taking all that creative energy that would be great to put into the thing you're going to make, and you're putting it into creative ways to stop yourself from doing it. And you're just mulling over the consequences of any decision that you could make. What's going on behind the scenes? Why, why are we doing this to ourselves? Why are we not just getting to it? What are the root causes of these creative blocks? Well, they're rooted in, in, in a sort of a complex mixture of different kinds of psychological factors, but the, probably the big one, the big daddy of them all, perfectionism. Perfectionism comes into play because we worry that the thing that we're about to make, if we ever get around to making it, is not going to be perfect. It's not going to meet these high standards that we have of what we could make, right? We've spent all this time reading books and going to museums and going on Instagram and seeing all this amazing stuff that everybody else is making. And we, we know what greatness is. We can see it. I know. I know what could be awesome. But I also know that I'll never be able to achieve it. What's the point of doing this if I can't be perfect? It paralyzes you. And you feel like, in the end, it's better not to even do it. It's not even worth it because whatever I do is just going to be disappointing. And you just get into this horrible, whirling storm of self hatred and harsh judgment. And that is not a great place to start making art by beating yourself up. You know, you don't want to have an opening bit of self-abuse before you sit down to make something because it's going to infect everything. And also, when you sit down to make something creative, you think to yourself, ugh, is this going to be another opportunity for me to tell myself how much I suck? I'd rather watch TV. I'd rather go on YouTube. I'd rather do anything but that. So we've got to try and stop that. So perfectionism is setting up this ridiculous standard and it's also sucking all the fun out of it because, because our whole goal becomes how do I achieve that thing? We miss the journey. We miss the adventure. We miss all the possible things that could happen because we have this plan. It's got to be this way. Here's the thing, a truth about almost all creative work. The people who create great stuff almost never know what it's going to be like when they start. 
sure you'll you'll hear about like artists who um, you know have done a lot of preparatory sketches, or you'll hear about authors who have got very detailed outlines of exactly how their story is going to go. But the fact is, if you step back the generation before that, they also started with a blank page, even those people who do chart out everything. And they allowed themselves to explore, to experiment, to see where things are going to go. It doesn't jump out of your head fully formed. It's a myth. You have to experiment and try stuff. All the stuff doesn't work. You figure that out. You try it out. doesn't work. You move on. It's just paper, people. It's paper. It's ink. It's really not expensive. Nobody cares. They'll cut down some more trees if they have to for you. But the fact is that when you start out, don't, ex- don't think that you're going to have this final vision. And then all you have to do is like f- follow that plan. Another reason to not look, think about it that way is because it's not really that much fun. It becomes like building Ikea furniture or something where you have the plan and you just pull the pieces together and then you'll have the thing. That's not what creativity is about. It's about the exploration. It's about trying a little bit of this and a little bit of that, throw in some of this, some of that. That's the fun of it. So plan to do that. And perfectionism kind of doesn't allow for that because perfectionism says, well, you should have had this all figured out. You should know exactly what you're going to do. It should be exactly this way. It ain't necessarily so. Another thing that happens to us, and perfectionism is tied to this, is we look at what other people do and we compare ourselves with them. We compare ourselves to other artists, especially those that we think are more successful or more talented than we are. And so you go onto Instagram and you look at all the stuff and you go, oh, I should be able to do this. But you have no idea what went into those people making the stuff that they made, how much work they put into it, how many experiments and how many, much failure went into that. You're just looking at the final result. You know, you're looking at the overnight success. And we all know overnight successes don't really exist. Everybody puts a lot of work into what they're doing. And you should not compare yourself with them. You're not trying to do what they did. Why? Because they did it already. There's no point in saying, I wish I could draw like so-and-so. I've seen this time and again where people say, I wish I could draw this perfect manga character. And I always think, why? Why? It's been drawn. Why do you need to draw that particular thing? Are you trying to impress your friends at school? What's the thinking behind it? Why not make something new of your own? Make something that's screwed up like we all are. Don't make something perfect that's a perfect reproduction of something somebody else made. That's just a mechanical process. It's not art. It's not creativity. And it's really not that much fun. And so you look at other people and you think, oh, I wish I could do what they do. But don't wish that you could do what you could do if you let yourself do it and if you got rid of your feelings of inadequacies and all this hesitation that's stopping you from starting. Tied into this is a fear of failure, right? We're afraid that this project is not going to turn out and just thinking about that, thinking about the consequences to ourselves of failing can be so intimidating. Not just that you know you're going to fail, but you know how terrible you're going to feel when you do. That again gets in the way. They always say failure is not an option. I don't know in what universe that's true. Failure is always an option. Failure is almost always necessary for success. You've got to screw up. You've got to fall down. You've got to erase the things that didn't work and try them again. You've got to Delete a few paragraphs before you write the new ones. That's totally normal. Failure is inevitable. Failure is welcome. Failure is your education. So if you're so terrified that you'll fail, I don't really think you'll be going to get very far. But you can control that. And you can say to yourself, what's the worst that's going to happen? I'm going to waste some paper? Somebody who's an idiot isn't going to like what I did? It doesn't matter. Try it. And see what happens. That's the adventure of it, the discovery. The, you know, as you as you flounder through your process. Are you worrying also about what other people are going to think? About the potential criticism and the judgment and how somebody's going to look at it and say, 
oh, what are you, an artist now? You think you're, you think you know how to draw? You think you know how to write? You think you know how to create? Are you looking at that and thinking, God, if somebody, see, somebody sees this, if I go on YouTube and I make a video where I'm rambling about a lot of stuff and people are unsubscribing, that'll be so terrible. What we're really afraid of is not necessarily that the judgment of the people on our work is going to be severe. What we're worried about is that that somehow reflects on us, that they're going to think that we're lesser, that we're not good, that we're not competent, and we're not good as people. Our self-worth is tied to their judgment. A lot of them are people we don't even know, or the people who don't even know us, and their opinion really isn't ultimately that important. Because who knows, if you actually can go ahead and do stuff, putting aside their judgment for now, go ahead and do stuff, you might surprise yourself and them by where you get to. But if you're so terrified of what they're going to say, so terrified of how they're going to judge you, you can't even begin, well, you're not going to get very far. We also worry about being imposters, doubting ourselves, right, and thinking, I'm not an artist. I'm not a writer. Not only are they going to know that about me, but I know deep down that I'm no good at this. Well, again, maybe it's because you haven't done it that much. Maybe it's because you've allowed all these creative blocks to stop you from actually doing it, and that's why you're not achieving this amazing thing that you could achieve. So stop worrying about being an imposter, and, and maybe instead see what can you get away with. What can you get away with? What if you pretend that you're an artist? Don't worry about somebody finding that out about you. Say, yeah, I'm an artist. What are you going to do about it? And try it out and see what happens. Take, take the risk. I think the downside is pretty minimal. Let's talk about what happens also when you've had a bad experience, a negative experience, right? And you failed at some point or you've been criticized, or you think you've been criticized, or you thought that somebody didn't really like what you did, or you tried it and it didn't really work, and then you say, I tried that, I'm never going to do it again. It was too humiliating, it was too difficult. Now, you may have done this 20 years ago. You may have done it when you were in junior high. But you had such a negative experience all that time ago that you're afraid to ever try it again. I understand that. It can be really traumatic to be judged harshly by authority figures or by family members or even by yourself and you're afraid to ever go through that again. But also, look at yourself as an adult and say, well, honestly, does you know Mrs. Smith who taught art in seventh grade, do I really care about her? I don't even know if she's alive anymore. Or my grandmother who said, oh, you know, you have no talent. <clears throat> Shake it off, people, and see if you can get past that. And again, the way to get past it is to start got to start and try it. Take that risk. If you don't want to show it to anybody else because you're afraid of their judgment for now, fine, don't. But don't do that to yourself. Don't say, I don't even want my own self to see how bad it's possible that it'll be. Tr try to push past that. Another thing that I see with a lot of people who are afraid to start is they don't have a lot of experience starting. They don't have a routine of making things on a regular basis. They're coming to it new. They have ridiculously inflated expectations of what they should be able to do the very first time they try it. And because they don't get amazing results the first time, they don't come back for a second helping. And they don't eventually get to the point where it becomes a regular thing that they feel confident about. And that's what you need to do is you need to establish some routine in what you're doing. You have to say to yourself, I'm going to try and draw for 10 minutes every morning. I'm going to try and write something. Before I go to bed, I'll write a paragraph on my phone. You know, I'm going to try and uh, just make this into a regular thing that I do, understanding that it may not be good every time I do it, but that's part of it, right? The more you do it, the more experiences you'll have, good and bad. You could do this for years and sometimes do have bad days, sometimes have plateaus where you don't improve at all and then suddenly you spike up and something incredible happens but that only happens if you show up on a regular basis so try and commit to yourself and say how can i have a routine that i do this on a regular basis so that i can get past these fears and i can start to dirty some paper and to start to fill some canvases and to start to see how it goes so 
If you're a beginner, bear that in mind. It's a long journey. Artists spend their entire lives learning and experimenting. Think of Matisse, you know, in his 80s, making collage in his sitting in bed with the scissors and, and paper, barely able to see, still trying new stuff. You think of Picasso in his 90s, still trying new things. A lot of stuff didn't work. Still trying, still playing, checking it out. So don't think that you're going to learn to draw. You're going to learn to write. It doesn't work that way. It's an ongoing adventure. So now let's get down to some specific strategies for how you can today get past this creative block that's stopping you from starting. First of all, acknowledge that you're afraid. You know, yes, accept it. It's part of the creative process. Fear can be part of the creative process. You know, this is deep stuff a lot of the times. You're t you're connecting to things that have been part of your whole life, that are part of who you are. It's heavy. It can, be, it can be significant, but that's also the reward of it. So just say, okay, yeah, I'm a bit afraid right now. Um, okay, I, I, can, I, can, I can handle it. I can do this. But yeah, I'm a bit afraid. I'm a bit afraid. Um, you know, and in fact, a lot of times I think that that's an interesting way to, to actually get yourself started is to think about your fear. Think about what are the things that you're afraid of? What's holding you back? What's, what's going on in your mind? And make that the thing that you put on the page first. Open your sketchbook. Draw a cartoon of yourself being afraid, sitting there talking to a block that's blocking the road, and make a little cartoon about that conversation. Or just start to write. I'm afraid. I don't think I can write anything. I have no ideas. I don't think I can break out of this just start writing that explore it and suddenly you go oh oh i i am writing i am writing it may be crap but i'm writing you keep writing and writing and eventually good stuff starts to come up starts to bubble up to the surface i can't tell you how many times i sit down to write i write several paragraphs and i cut off those paragraphs and throw them out later on just because that was the first stuff I wrote doesn't mean that it's really the beginning. It's not. It's just the stuff that's cranking. It's kind of like when uh, you go to the, to the symphony and you hear all of the musicians warming up. You go to a tennis match and you see the players, you know, knocking balls back and forth, stretching, trying things out. You know, you, you go to a life drawing class and you'll see uh, um, the artist doing quick 10-second sketches 15 second sketches as the model is moving around just to loosen up so just try that try just doing some stuff it doesn't have to be oh i've got a page in my sketchbook i've got to make a, a perfect drawing right out of the bat no start by just loosening up and maybe use your anxiety as creative fodder or if you don't want to do that look around the room look at the dish of coins that you have there, the, the cup full of pens, the, the view out the window, your shoe on, on the floor next to your table, the cat sitting on the windowsill, and use that as the first thing that you write about or the first thing that you draw. Just do that. I'm gonna, nobody wants a, necessarily a, a drawing of a cup full of pens, so don't think about it as being like this perfect thing you have to finish. Just do that as your thing start that out right but you will have made something then and honestly inertia is such a powerful force it stops us from starting but once you do start even if you're starting in a crappy way just that motion starts to get the juices flowing starts to allow you to experiment to try stuff out and it really makes a big difference i also like to smart start small you know, so I one one thing I do, and and I've made um, a video about that that I imagine I'll be able to put up there. Um, that is, draw some squares on the first page of your sketchbook, squares two inches square, let's say, and then do a little drawing in one of those squares, just one, do a little drawing of that bowl of pens or that tree out the window. Just do a little drawing, and that's and spend three minutes doing it, and then. If that wasn't too bad, do the next one. Or then maybe come back after lunch and do a next one. Or come back tomorrow or this evening, do another one. And slowly you'll fill that page with a bunch of little drawings. 
And what I find is even if each of those drawings is bad, eh, mediocre, second rate, together they will look nice. They will look beautiful. There's something about it that we see a bunch of drawings, even if they're not great ones, together they have a magical quality to it. So keep reminding yourself of that. And this particular drawing wasn't that good. It doesn't matter. When it's surrounded by other ones, it will be great, I promise you. Another way of dealing with this um, anxiety that you might have about all the choices available to you is to limit your choices and to say, okay, uh, I'm only going to work in these two colors or I'm only going to work with one red pencil and one black marker and one green crayon, let's say. I'm only going to work with those three materials so I don't have to think about all the other stuff. Or I'm going to uh, just draw a self-portrait. I'm just going to look at myself and I'm just going to draw that. Uh, or I'm just going to write about, uh, I'm going to write about a red pen. I'm just going to write about a red pen. I don't know what about a red pen. I'm going to start write, writing, this is a red pen. See where it goes. You can go on the internet and just type in drawing prompts, writing prompts, and you'll get zillions of them. Or just open a book and stick your finger at random on a word and just use that word, whatever it is, that's your starting point. You know, touch it, miracle. You touch it, orangutan. You touch it, chocolate. And that's where you start and you go from there. And you don't have the infinite variety, the infinite landscape. You have a starting point. You have that little grain of sand that you've dropped into the oyster that produces the pearl. You need to have that grain of sand, though. What if you embrace the opposite of perfectionism, imperfection, and you say, you know what? My goal is to screw up. My goal is to make mistakes. My goal is to try stuff I've never done before and to not do it well because when I do that, I learn. When I do that, I discover new things. Perfectionism is like coloring within the lines. It's driving down the straight road. Yeah, maybe I'll get somewhere interesting, maybe. But when, I'm, when I have the whole um, horizon to go towards, when I can go in all kinds of different directions, when I can afford to make mistakes and start again, when I'm actually wanting to make mistakes so that I can see what will happen and learn from them, it becomes an adventure, it becomes really exciting, and you never know what's going to happen. Another limitation can be time. Instead of saying to yourself, I could draw, I could write anything, I don't know where to go, I could write a novel, I, I don't know how to, say I'm going to do, I'm going to work for 10 minutes. That's it, 10 minutes. Set a timer on your watch, 10 minutes. And then it creates a sort of a sense of urgency and it can help you to break that inertia of starting. <gasps> I only have 10 minutes, uh, la, 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 let me just try something. And just try it. Try doing a drawing, a time drawing of in five minutes, and then do the time drawing of the same thing in three minutes, in one minute, 30 seconds. It will get your blood pumping. It's exciting. It's moving forward. Stuff is happening. Similar with writing. Just write a little paragraph about something in 10 minutes. Be, say, I have to write. It doesn't matter if it's good or not. I just have to write half a page, and I have 15 minutes to do it, and go. Come back and fix it later on. But I only have 15 minutes. I'm not going to rewrite it. I'm not going to judge it. I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to do it. And that makes a big difference. And speaking of just doing it, try and think of how you can establish a routine. How can you create a regular schedule for yourself, a regular ritual that will help you to cultivate this habit of creativity so that you are making stuff. You don't have to think about it. You just do it on a regular basis. Every time you go to the gym, you don't have a perfect workout. Right? Every time you cook dinner, it isn't always amazing. It doesn't matter. You're doing it on a regular basis, and sometimes it'll be better, and sometimes it'll be mediocre. It doesn't matter. Do it on a regular basis. I know I've said that to you again, but it's a habit of mine to remind you to have a habit. Ultimately, this all comes down to trusting the process. People have been doing this for thousands of years. You're not going through anything nobody's gone through before. We all have it. We all have creative blocks. We all have problems we struggle with. You can get past them and you will. Trust your creative instinct. You are a creative person. We all are. There's a natural process to creativity. It has ups and downs. Trust it. You will get through it. Okay. Everyone faces these challenges. It's a normal part of the creative journey. Keep telling yourself that and start making stuff. Say to yourself, it doesn't matter if it's good. What matters is that I'm doing it. Okay? 
Get that tattooed on your arm. Make that on a t-shirt. It doesn't matter if it's good. What matters is that you are doing it. Okay? And it, it, enjoy yourself. Make, being creative is wonderful. It is fun. It is something that we did as kids. You can get back to that joy. If you can just get this judgment and perfectionism out of your way and just start doing it. And it can be as much joy in making mediocre stuff as there can be in making huge masterpieces. Masterpieces can be stressful and they can uh, go out of your control. But playing is primal. It is who we are. It is what we do. Find joy in the process of creation. And allow yourself to make progress even if it's slow. Don't say to yourself, I don't see any change. You will see change. You may not see it today. You may need some time, some distance from it. But you need lots of examples to see how you're growing. You can't just expect to leap forward into perfectionism right away. Celebrate your small victories and recognize your breakthroughs. Because the fact is, the greatest victory really is showing up. Show up and keep showing up. If you feel like you must judge yourself, judge yourself on how consistently you show up. Judge yourself on how much of a break you give yourself. Judge yourself on how good you are to you. Don't judge yourself just on whether or not you think your art is any good. Have fun. Don't be afraid to get creative. Trust yourself. Trust the creative process. Trust me. <laughs> it's going to work out. And start today. Start watching this video. Get to work. See you later.